When you're looking in OmniCenter at incidents, you're going to see that they are in a number of different states. So you're going to see uh, open is a common state. This is what you see when they first open and until somebody does something about it. Open incidents are going to generate actions and actions can be notifications like email. It can be uh, messages using things like webhooks. If I want to tie into services like Slack or if I want to tie into, you know, um, Ops Genie or other kinds of notification services. And you can also define your own custom notification formats as well. Um, but this is also going to include active response. So I can execute things like SSH or PowerShell commands or API calls to different systems to reboot things or restart services. Active response is only, only happen on incident open or if someone manually executes them from the web interface with the correct permissions. The reason for this is simple. If we're trying to restart a service, for example, when the incident opens, we're going to try to execute that action automatically to restart that service. If it succeeds, the incident will close. I don't want to execute the restart again. So we're only going to execute active response on the initial open of the incident. Notifications, on the other hand, can happen at multiple points. So acknowledged is a state that you get into when someone's acknowledged the problem. You can do it via the web interface. You can do it via the mobile app. You can even do it by responding to the alert email if you've set that up. Once an incident goes into acknowledged state, any further escalation or re-notifications are suppressed. Um, and this will cover all of the related alarms in the incident. So one incident acknowledgement acknowledges everything that's related to that particular incident. You can also enter a note that'll be sent out with that alarm. So anyone who got that message can tell the reason you acknowledged it, who's working on it, um, you know, what's being done there. It also changes the color in the UI so you can tell that it's a brand new or not a brand new problem and that someone's taken ownership of it. Now, you may also see a state called alarms cleared. Alarms cleared means that all of the alarms have recovered, but we're waiting to make sure that the system um, is stable. So we're waiting to make sure it's not flapping. Um, and what we do is there's a timer that starts. And if none of the alarms happen again within that timer, the incident will close. If they do, the incident will reopen and it will reopen to whatever state it came from. So if it was open, it will go back to open. If it had been acknowledged, it will stay acknowledged. So this is basically used to suppress things like alerts from flapping interfaces. Um, if you've got kind of intermittent problems going on, you'll get the initial incident alert, but if you acknowledge it, then you can suppress all of those additional notifications until the problem is resolved, even if it's flapping. Lastly, the closed state is what happens if the alarms don't recur during the alarms cleared fit timer, it'll go into the closed state, it'll recover the incident, and any new incidents or issues that happen with those same devices will open new incidents at that point. Closed incidents can never be reopened. Uh, and that's at this point when we'll send out another notification saying that the incident has been closed. You may also see a term in OmniCenter that's active incidents. There's, you'll see this on a few pages. Active incidents simply means anything not closed. So that'll include um, open, acknowledged, and alarms cleared, um, as opposed to open incidents, which only shows open. So when it, if the list is open incidents, when I acknowledge it, it'll leave the list. If the list is active incidents, um, when I acknowledge it, it will still be in the list. And that's kind of the clarification there. You can see that on the dashboard and also on the active incidents page in OmniCenter.